What is going on, gaming nerds? Welcome back to Midnight Gaming with Mystic Nightmare. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. Hopefully, you guys are having an amazing day. I'm having a pretty decent day. It is mid. No, I'm not having a pretty decent day. I don't know why I said that. It is midnight yet again, yet again. We are back on Russian Fishing 4. And today, I figured, you know what? We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a requested video uh, for trolling the Doka Archipelago. Now, I decided to go ahead and do this because, as you can see, I tried to cut off my thumb today with a chainsaw. Yes, I said it. A chainsaw. That's what I tried to do today. So, I figured, you know what? I can't really play very well when it comes down to anything else, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And, obviously, I'm having a very hard time controlling anything in this boat because I can't use my stupid thumb. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You stupid boat, would you just go forward? Okay, so to start off with, let's go ahead and talk about the buildings. That's a building, that's a building, that's a building, that's a building. Okay, buildings are done. I'm just kidding. That's the tackle shop right there. That's where you get your tackle at right there. That's your admissions. You're going to go ahead and pull up this map. This map's going to freaking create, going to be absolutely crazy because you think it looks big, but in fact, it's 10 times bigger than what you think it is. It's jive freaking enormous. Over here, you've got your grocery store. Over here, you've got your ATM along with your workshop. There is no hardware store here, so don't 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 hope for that. Don't come up here looking to buy anything. Over here, you've got your cafe order with a little bit of a vending machine, and your last building down here is, of course, dun da da da, your handmade lures. You can go ahead and buy all your handmade lures here if you want to go ahead and spend the gold for them. That's really up to you. Uh, hit the like button if you want to see uh, a video that talks about ground bait and handmade lures and if they're actually worth it. I'm just kidding. That was a ploy from me to you guys to get you to hit the like button. If you do like like the video, just hit the like button because it does help me out with the algorithm. Anyway, that's pretty much all of the houses except for down here. You've got a fish market right here and then over here. Oh, by the way, if you want to do some of your drying and stuff like that, you shouldn't be drying fish. So even though it's over here, just don't. It's just not worth it. They still haven't made it worth it. Uh, your last little house over here is your boat house. Let's go ahead and talk about the boats. When it comes down to your boats, um, basically, to be honest with you, you've got two different boats. So you've got your red boat down there, and you've got your brand new boat that I crashed coming in. When it comes down to your boats, you've got a very high price. Now, here's the crazy thing. When it comes down into the Ladoga, in the Ladoga Archipelago, um, it doesn't actually cost a lot. It's thirty-three eighty. If you go down to Tunguska, it actually costs 48, 48 silver. So it actually costs a little bit more to go down there. However, your boat rentals here are obnoxiously large. Okay, this red one is not the red boat. This red one is your... It always means the higher level of boat or the faster boat. The blue one down here is your red boat. I do not suggest ever using the red boat because it's just not fast enough. If you go ahead and rent one of each and you go ahead and say go up to this 18 meter hole up here and you you just drive out there, you'll see how slow the red boat actually is. But it's up to you. If you're staying close to the islands, then yeah, you could use the red boat. But as you see, it is obnoxiously expensive to buy the motorboat. And that is because... The motorboat is so bloody fast, and what's really cool about it is we're going to go ahead and talk about it in a minute, but you can actually stand up on the motorboat uh, while it's going full speed. Yeah, very dangerous, but very fun. And every time I say motorboat, I just want to go motorboat, but I'm not going to do that because that would just be weird. Anyway, your goal every time that you come and you fish here is to purchase one of these, these five dazers, Unless you've only got two or three hours, you purchase one of these five days and you try to make enough money to cover this 300, 400 silver, whatever. And then anything above that is profit. OK, so that's what you're looking for to do. Once you've covered that 400 silver, anything above that is profit. On top of that, I do highly suggest that in the background, every day you come in, you purchase a five day. If you're going to go to the bathroom, that's fine. But if you're going to go take a nap, log out that way you're not wasting your time on this every time you log in it'll re it'll you'll have still time left to fish okay 
but log out every time you're going to leave maybe go cook food or go to dinner don't sit in the game because you're going to be wasting all of the silver that comes with this log out and then when you log back in you'll still be able to catch enough fish and you'll be constantly fishing and using this ticket to its fullest and you will easily be able to make up the 400 silver that this costs in the background however i highly suggest if you're a high level player and you're just watching this for fun i always suggest because the devs have changed the tickets for these you can buy them with gold and if you buy them with gold then you can you can send them to other people but the gold in this game is really expensive so you don't really want to do that so always make sure to have a couple of tickets usually with me as you can see i've got one of each um that's just over time i've just purchased them over time me first of all right off the bat i buy this one and then i'll always buy always make sure i have a three day on the back in the back burner because of some of the bigger fish that are in here well one bigger fish mainly you can buy buy this one and then when this one runs out you can go ahead and and pump this one but just use it as a backup never actually use it especially if you're a new player you can go ahead and go with the two day if you want to go with the two day that'll give you an extra two hours to fight a fish so this bad boy actually has one of these uh, if you can see it to the bottom just at the bottom of the screen <clears throat> it has it has one of those levers that that you push forward and you it's right there it has one of those levers you push forward and you push back when you utilize this to go backwards, you have to slow down to zero and then you have to pull it back. When you go forward, you have to slow down to zero if you're going backwards and, and press it forward. It can be obnoxious to drive this thing, but the great thing is, is you can go full speed. You can press, uh, nope, I'm not going to turn off the engine. Go back up. Once you get on the water, you can be going full speed and you can actually, no, I'm not turning off the engine, you knucklehead. You can stand up when you go full speed. See, I'm trying to go forward, and it's not allowing me to. You can go full speed, and you can stand up. Why are you telling me to turn off the engine? You shouldn't be able to go full speed. Maybe it's only trolling. Let me see. It might only be trolling, but you can stand up. Yeah, so it's only trolling. So you stand up. I thought it was full speed. That would have been funner if it was if it was full speed. Anyway, while you're trolling, you can stand up. You can walk around and stuff like this. They have what's called a... A player drift when you're doing this is you're fighting fish and you're looking forward if t you wait and, uh, over time what's going to happen is you're going to slightly just start skating backwards and after a little bit of time you're going to end up coming back all the way back over here if you don't actually touch forward or WASD and and walk forward uh, the trolling on this is really great but if you want to steer you absolutely have to sit down so make sure that if you're using your third rod and you don't have anywhere to place that that you do not turn off your engine um, and you go ahead and chase down your fish if it's big enough um, you go ahead and chase it uh, 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 by sitting down okay you guys with me so far you see i'm pressing back and it's still not slowing very fast that's why this is obnoxious you're just going to hit everything you're going to run into everything but it's actually a super bloody fast boat so when it comes down to it it gets you to out here really 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 quick okay now forget about the rest of that crap when it comes down to the boat i have about 1500 different suggestions when it comes down to fighting fish with this thing and, and yada 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 and how it works and stuff like that but i'm not going to do that let's talk about what you're really here for Okay, but before I do that, because you can't actually see anything and I want a pretty sunset, I'm going to wait till daytime and we're going to talk about fish and what you're looking to catch here and how much you're looking to actually make. Okay, and we're back. It's a nice early five o'clock in the morning. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the different types of fish that you guys are going to be looking at when it comes down to it. Now, right off the bat, we've got the Ladoga Salmon. Number two, we've got Atlantic Salmon. These two fish are the most badass fish when it comes down to this lake, river, whatever you want to call it, archipelago. And it's the two things that you're going to be wanting the most when it comes down to fishing. Okay, They're going to make the most money for you. They're going to have the most fun catching them. They're strong, powerful fish, but for the most part, they're just cash money in the bank. That's basically it. Okay, Number three is going to be your lake trout. Number four is going to be your Xander, and number five is going to be your Pike. Now, all three of these are kind of what I like to call fillers. They're what you catch between Ladoga Salmon and Atlantic Salmon. Does that make sense? Do not throw these away. Now, yes, if you're someone that's super anal about, oh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and only catch markers, that's absolutely fine if you want to do that. But me personally, as long as they're over 400 grams, I go ahead and keep the Pikes, the Xanders, and the Lake Trout. 
I sell them. It's easy to get back here. If you're way out here, all you got to do is just log out of the game, log back in. You'll come back to here. You can sell all your fish. Then you can just jump on the boat and go back out. You see what I'm saying? Me personally, I go ahead and just keep pretty much every single fish that I catch as long as it's not super tiny. And then I'll go ahead and sell them all. I really don't make any fish pieces or anything because it's not really worth it to me. I don't use fish pieces that much. Okay, so number six is going to be your smelt. When it comes to your smelt, you're probably thinking, eh, I think I'm just going to throw all the ways those away. Don't. Smelt sell for actually really good. A lot of people will throw it away just because they think it's small and it doesn't make a lot of money, but it actually does make a lot of money. So smelt here, if you want, you can go ahead and keep the only the 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 marker smelt if you want. But me personally, as long as it's over 50 grams, I keep the bad boy. Okay? I sell them. You'll get a lot of, of smelt trophies here. It's all good. Keep them, sell them. They're, they're, they're money makers. There's also a filler just like the pike, Xander, and trout. Then you've got Rippus and you've got Vendus. You will catch a lot of Rippus and you will get a lot of trophy Rippus here. They do sell for pretty well. I personally keep them all. Uh, Vendus are the same thing. You're going to get a lot of them here. I don't get a lot of trophies on the Vendus, but eh, it's not that big of a deal. I usually catch them. With all of these, not talking about number nine... How much can you make? Well, to be completely honest with you, you can make anywhere from 900 silver to 1500 to 2000 if you only keep um, markers. Okay, so basically when it comes down to it, I'm going to show a couple of clips of me selling some fish. But if you look at the, the, the amounts that I actually sell, sometimes I sell only 50, sometimes I'll sell a whole entire... Um, 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 keep net full. If I sell a whole entire keep net, usually I'll get around fifteen hundred to two grand, depending on what I've kept and what I haven't kept. Um, if I keep absolutely everything, um, I will also be selling even perch. Like most of the time, I'll I'll, I'll send the perch away or I'll, I'll release the perch unless I have a marker perch. So marker perch, I guess you could technically say, are number nine on the on the list. But for the most part. I'll even keep the perch as long as it's a marker and I'll still end up making around 1500 silver. Um, and that's with a full keep net and that's on the lower side. Um, if the game isn't super active, if, if Archipelago isn't super active, then it can go down to 900, but still you're making a lot of silver. Now, can you get this in within two days? Not really, no. I mean, the best, you might be able to get it in two hours, but for the most part, it's going to take you three to four hours, maybe five hours to get a full keep net, but it's absolutely worth it because you make a lot of money. And this is without... The last fish that we're going to talk about, which is the Baltic Sturgeon. The Baltic Sturgeon are one of the most obnoxious fish in the game, in my opinion. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to talk a little bit about how they run. They run very simply. They'll they'll stop. They'll let you they'll let you reel in for a minute or two, and then they'll turn around and they'll run for a couple seconds, and then they'll stop and they'll let you reel in a little bit. And this whole time, what it's doing is it's making you feel like that you're being able to pull them in, that you're getting ahead of them, you're pulling them in. So they'll stop, you'll reel for a few seconds, you'll get some line in, and then they'll run for a few seconds. Now what happens is I like to kind of call these guys the secret assassins because they're very sneaky. And because they're doing this, you're thinking, oh, I'm doing great. I'm getting this Baltic Sturgeon in. He's coming in. Uh, yes, I'm feeling like I'm reeling. He's really not running too far. He's run, not running too fast. I'm totally fine. But a half an hour goes by and you're like, why in the hell am I not pulling this guy into my boat yet? Well, the reason you're not pulling this guy into your boat is because he runs just far enough, just fast enough to pull out the exact same amount of line that you just reeled in. And you do that over and over and over and over and over again. And then what ends up happening is the little bugger, you realize this about half an hour into the fight. And you realize you're sitting at a quarter, like a quarter of your line is out. You reel in half of that and then he'll run and he'll get that quarter out again. And then he'll reel it in, make you believe like you're doing really good. And then he'll run again. And he'll get that quarter back out again. So you're always like a quarter out of line, even if you're chasing him down. Does that make sense? 
So that's what makes them obnoxious. But well, the worst part is, is by this point, what they're going to end up doing is you're going to look at your reel and you're going to go, oh my goodness, for the last half an hour to an hour, I've been fighting this fish thinking that I've been reeling it in. And because of that, and he hasn't been running very fast, very far, I've had my reel on 28 or 29. And you're going to look at your reel and you're going to realize he's ripped your reel apart. He's ripped your friction brake apart. Okay, so that's what's obnoxious about them. So when it comes down to it, here's my advice. If you've got lower reels and you don't have a really big heavy reel, turn it down to 14 or 16 and just do circles around the little bastard. That's all you need to do. Wait until he goes down or wait until he gets tired. If you've got something a little bigger like a Tagara or an Evia, you can put a little bit of pressure on him, put a little bit of weight on him. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that you get between him and the border. Make sure you push him towards the islands if you can. Okay, you can put a little bit of pressure, put your reel up to 29, 28 for a minute or two, and then turn it down and then, you know, troll around him and whatnot. But eventually he's going to go ahead and give up and come in. I think the biggest one that I've actually caught, if I look at my statistics, uh, is 103 kilograms. And that was my, my biggest one. Okay, so, and that was out here on Ladoga Archipelago. So that is your Baltic sturgeon. They're obnoxious. Most people will just open up their reel and they'll let the, the Baltic sturgeon get off. And that's it. You're done. They just say, screw it. We don't want to deal with the Baltic sturgeon. But they do actually make quite a bit of money when you sell them on here. Um, I'll put one up that's only like 37 kilograms, something like that. And go ahead and show you how much they make. Okay, now that we've talked about that... Let's talk about fishing spots. I'm going to just pull up the map because there's no way in hell I'm driving all of these areas. Now, as for the last four days, if you come here and you go to one of these spots and you catch nothing, it is not my fault. Because within the last four days of the game, the game has gotten extremely dead on every single lake except for Amber Lake. Archie has been one of them. I've been, in the last two days, I've been able to make just enough money to make about 700 to a grand, um, catching about 50 to 75 fish on here. But we're going to go ahead and talk about each one of these these spots. Number one, the one of the very first ones that was super ridiculously stupid active and people absolutely loved is the 13-meter hole. Okay? It was one of the first ones that was super active. Um... You do not want to go back and forth in the center here. What I personally do is I try and hit these spots right here. That means they're a little bit more shallow. So if it's hot, then the fish will go into these deeper parts right here, maybe even up to this right here. But if it's cold, they'll come up to these shallow areas and you can cross over these shallow areas and you can catch fish up here. So this is one of the first one. If you're going to go through the center, you're probably not going to catch very, very many fish. But if you skim this top line right here, this is one of the first one that was active. You skim that top line all the way up here. You can skim this top line up there. And that's where the fish are. This is one of the biggest things that you'll notice about this game when you come to archipelago if you haven't figured it out yet just because you're in this hole doesn't mean you're going to be catching fish if you're down at the bottom you may not catch fish or you may catch fish if you're in the center you may not catch fish or you may catch fish if you're at the top of the hole just because you're in a 13 meter hole doesn't mean you're going to catch fish okay for me personally one of the best places that i've ever fished for like two months straight when the game first came out with archipelago was right here this little strip right here just this little and i would go all the way up here past this island and i would turn back and i would go all the way down to the 15 and i would turn back and go up and down i still hit this every now and then when it goes dead and a lot of times it's still fairly active okay so this is a great one now there's two areas that when you ask your chat, you're going to jump in and say, hey, guys, where's the fish at? And you're going to say it just like that. Um, and they're going to tell you one or two places. They're going to say I-7 or they're going to say B3 to D3. Now, B3 to D3. Here's three over here. You go to B3 right here, and then you go to D3. So you're probably thinking, oh, you're in the 25-meter hole, right? Wrong. You can catch fish in there. In fact, you control this whole thing right here and you can catch fish. But for the most part, B3 to D3 is right here. You see this deep? This is the Mariana Trench right here. This thing has is so deep that it has no actual meter to it. 
Um, and you go from over here all the way down here to the 37, and then you come all the way back. That's B3 to D3. And you, there are some times that you'll be in the 25 meter hole, the 39 meter hole, and you're going back and forth, but you need to be specific. You need to ask them, say, okay, are you in the trench part, in the dark part, the, the skinny dark part, or the trench part? And they'll say yes, or they'll say no. If they're saying no, then they're actually in the holes. If they say yes, then they're in this right here. Now, there's certain places here that will be certain, certainly active. Usually around here is where it's active for me, but I really hate this spot. So when I troll, I only troll to the left, and then I come all the way back over here real quick, and then I'll troll to the left again. Why? Because if I'm trolling to the right and I hook into something big, there's a very good chance that it's going to pull me off of the map, and I'm going to go over the map, and I'm not going to be able to pull it in, and that irritates the hell out of me. If that happens to you, don't just turn around and go this way because you're probably going to lose your fish before you actually get to the, to the barrier. What you kind of want to do is you want to kind of angle up and you want to circle around the fish while you keep a tight line. That way, as the fish runs this way, you can kind of run up around here and then you can come down and you can get between you, uh, the you, the fish and the barrier over here. And then you can push the fish this way. OK, the second one is the bridge. This is your bridge right here. See this little bridge right here? I call this the bridge. If you ask me where you're, where the, you're fishing or I'm fishing and I say the bridge, that's what I'm talking about right there. I'm going to say B3 to I'm going to say B3 to D3, the bridge. I'm going to just go back and forth over here and pull my lower back lure back and forth. And it's where you're going to get a lot of salmon and a lot of Atlantic salmon. The third place over here is beneath this 37. I go from here all the way down to here, and then I go back up, and then I go back down. That's one of the best places. The next one they're going to say is they're going to say I-7. Now, as I said before, you can ask your chat this. You can go into the VK website, or you can go into the Discord for RF4, Russian Fishing 4, or you can go into MDOG's Discord. Okay? But most of the time, they're going to be saying this up here, B3 to D3, or they're going to be saying I7. I7 is right here, and it's this 13-meter hole right here. Like I said before, going through the center, you may not catch anything. You may have to skim the top. You may have to skim the bottom. So this is another one right here. Now, every now and then, this one won't be active. This one won't be active. Where do you want to go? Well, one of the first places that was also active was right here. Come up here, and you control this all the way down here, pull your lures through here, turn around, pull your lures back up through here, and you would be trolling this shallow spot right here. This used to be good. I still catch fish there every now and then. And then I also will troll all the way down through here, and sometimes I'll troll all the way through this whole thing right here. Okay? So you can try that. Where else can you go? The 18-meter hole has been hot before. The 27-meter hole through the 41 has been hot before. The 27 through the 18 has been hot before okay this 15 hole out down here has been hot but it hasn't been hot for a very long time um this is actually something that m dog was jigging in at one point and he caught a lot of jigging fish jigging they were small but he was jigging down here so other than that um this i'm going to give you one of my secret areas because i'm nice like that this little little 11 right here right here that's one of my secret areas okay and this nine too. Sometimes if I can't find anywhere else on the map to find a spot to go, I will drag through this ten, uh, through this nine, and I'll drag through this eleven. And then as soon as I start hitting into this eighteen or sixteen, I'll turn around and I'll come back up here. This eleven, a lot of times will still be active when the rest of the map is dead. Okay, so I'll drag through that, and I'll make damn sure to hit this little guy right in here or I'll hit this area right up here, and I'll actually catch a considerable amount of fish. Um, and then also this nine I'll drag through there. But other than that, that's pretty the, most, pretty the most active spots. You can try dragging down here. That's one of the greatest things about this map right here is the fact that there's a lot of people who will fish a lot of different areas in here, and they refuse to leave when it comes down to trolling Ladoga Archipelago. Now. If you want to go ahead and fish down here, please, if you find some place down here that's really popping off, like as of right now, we're having a hard time finding anything that's super active. And when I mean super active is we're looking for Ladoga salmon, Atlantic salmon, stuff like that. If you're only catching pike and Xander, you don't really need to let people know you can catch those pretty much anywhere on the map. 
but if you keep hitting a lot of Ladoga salmon and Atlantic salmon, we're talking a lot of them, let people know. Post it on the VK site. Post it on the Discord for RF4. Post it on MDogs Discord. Send me a message and say, dude, I'm like totally getting a lot of like Ladoga salmon and Atlantic salmon in this spot. Don't do it after three or four because that's not a lot. Do it after you've filled your, you know, your keep net halfway and then let me know. And that'd be appreciated. I might even do a video if it's super active and the rest of the, the, the archipelago isn't, okay? But right now, you really don't see a lot of people down here really fishing any of this down here. I tried this last night, didn't get anything. Tried this, nothing. This right over here, the 26, nothing. I got I7, nothing. The only place that I've really been able to catch anything lately is the 18 meter hole. And I haven't really been catching a lot lately in there, but it's enough where I can actually make my money back for renting the boat. Okay. And that's really all you were trying to do is make the money back for renting the boat. Okay. Let's talk about your gear. When it comes down to Ladoga Lake, I or the Ladoga Archipelago. I want you to kind of think of it as a really gigantic Volkov River. So when it comes down to gear, you want to understand, really game? We're just going to sit here and load today. You want to understand that the bigger the gear you have, the faster you pull in your fish, the faster you pull in your fish, the faster you get your gear back out, the faster you get your gear back out, the faster you catch another fish, and so on and so forth, and then you're making lots of money. When it comes down to reels, I would not come down here with a basic HSB, which is what most of you have. Is this basic thing. I feel like you need more max drag. Yes, you can fish here with the basic HSV. Yes, you can catch fish here. Yes, you can actually do okay. But eventually you're going to hook into something that's going to try and take everything you've got. And it's going to be a waste of time because it's usually going to be a ball, all Baltic sturgeon. Or it could be a 30 to 40 kilogram Atlantic salmon or a Ladoga salmon. And at that point, you really want to get those in because you're making a lot of money. Okay. So the HSV is fine, but I would highly suggest making sure that you upgrade the max drag, which is basically upgrading also your friction brake at the exact same time. You have to upgrade your friction brake to upgrade your max drag. So it's not going to damage your friction brake. I heard that somewhere the other day. And I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. When you upgrade your max drag, you're literally upgrading your friction brake. So it's not going to do any more damage to your friction brake. It's going to do the same amount because you're actually upgrading your friction brake to get your max drag. Your friction brake is what causes your max drag to go up. Okay. So me personally, I would upgrade the max drag on this. And yes, you are going to pay more money to get it fixed because you've got a higher max drag. Plain and simple. Um... The, the Narga, eh, 14 kilograms is fine. The big thing about the Narga is it's not that big of a deal because you're not really going to be ripping up your mech, but you're not going to be pulling in because of the low max drag. You're not going to be pulling in that quick. So your HSV is actually better to do that here when it comes down to it. Um, your Evia, absolutely, you can use that here. In fact, that's one of my setups right now. And mine is upgraded to max drag of 19. You don't have to upgrade it, but that'll absolutely work right here. In my opinion, the way that I see Ladoga Archipelago, um, I'd say about 16 or 17 kilograms or above, okay? Um, right now, I see people come in with the classic bait casting steelhead. The 600R, not the 500R, the 600R at 16 kilograms will work absolutely fine for you here because they've got a little bit of a better pull than the spinning rods or the spinning reels. So you can go ahead and use this. It'll be a little bit slower. Don't specifically buy this to come here. If you're going to buy a casting reel specifically to come here, try and save up for the conventional reel. Steelhead C30 or Steelhead C20. I would go with the Steelhead C30. Um, 17 kilograms. This is a really, really, really good one. A lot of people use this and it's pretty badass. Okay. So I wouldn't cue, I wouldn't be showing up with like a Zeman black box. I wouldn't show up here. 11 kilograms is not going to do it for you here. The billionaire tried absolutely 17.5 kilograms. Um, if you're looking at reels, spinning reels where is the overlord you can do the overlord from the christmas event that'll work here that's like a megara um, caliber hsv upgraded 
Uh, what else do we got? The I don't know what this over. I don't. Now I wouldn't use that one. Ten kilograms. The Beluga Vanga Absol freaking lootly can work here. Uh, the Megara can work here. The Evia. Um, the there's the Megara right there. You can use the Megara. The Tagara absolutely works here. Right now, what I'm actually fishing is way down back in the boat. I don't know why I didn't grab all of my rods out of it. I was trying to make the start of this video totally awesome, but it didn't work too well. Okay, so this is my Beluga Tagara. Sometimes I'll use a 60 kilogram on there and a 55 on there if I want to try and lock up on something. If not, I'm just fishing and I want to pull really hard i'll use it but usually this is what i'll do right here um 40 kilograms 34 uh, i use a beluga evia i have caught some big baltic sturgeons on this bad boy i'll use 35 and 34 right here uh, so the beluga evia this is one of the lowest rods right here and it still does fine it's the upgraded siberia caliber 80 slc um, and it's 19 kilograms. It's max drag is 19. It's fairly cheap to repair. It is not hard to upgrade. Um, and it works great. The 30 kilograms, actually this should be, yeah, that's about right. 30 kilograms, 28, absolutely works fine up here. So you don't need monster reels here. And a lot of you, I think, were trying to get me to do this video because you were scared of what type of reels that you want. You should use here that you need monster reels, but you don't. An upgraded HSV will take a while to actually get a Baltic in, but for the most part, it's fine. It actually works pretty decently. I would try to go something bigger. The bigger you have, the more fish that you're pulling in per hour, and the more you're actually making. When it comes down to rods, your casting rods, I think there's a Model 1 somewhere in here that you can use. I don't know where the hell it is. But I would probably go with the 30 kilogram plus. Anything lower is just, it's uncivilized. You shouldn't be using that. Anything lower than the 30 kilogram. Spinning rods, you can use, you know, a Super Duty. I would use the Super Duties. I still use the Super Duties. If you look on here, my Tagar has got the Advent SF100 HHH Mach 1 25 44 69. Um, I wouldn't buy this rod for a Tagara ever again because it's one kilogram too small on the load capacity. It's obnoxious as hell. It works, but it, it's obnoxious. But as you can see on the Maluga Evie, guess what I'm still using? The Stuper Duty, and it works absolutely fine. You know what I'm using on the Caliber 80 SLC? The Super Duty it works absolutely fine. So a Model 1, a Super Duty, um, Casting Rod, Model 1, Whatever, as long as it's 30 kilograms or above, you're probably going to be absolutely fine out here. When it comes down to float fishing, just don't. I can't find anywhere to float fish here. If it comes down to spinning from bank, just don't. You aren't going to catch anything. Um, I've tried jigging here. I've tried bottom fishing here. I have tried... I have tried throwing rocks in here, throwing dynamite in here. It doesn't matter. The only time that I catch anything, honestly, is when I troll. Okay, so let's talk about lures. Lures is going to be crazy. Uh, if you go in and you type in O R I G crank nine, the original crank nine. This was very, very, very popular five days ago. This thing was catching so much freaking fish. It was awesome. Now, right now, I think everybody's switching to a six. The six is working really good. I'm going to buy two of those right now because that's how much. I want to actually catch some fish. Um, then you have this hijacker. The hijackers. You can try any one. The 75, the slim, the slim 9. Um, the ones that I actually have been using in the past are these ones right here. The 75 SP006 I've tried before. They worked in the past. Um, the... 75 f why is there these different okay so this is the slim this is the regular hijacker in the past when the game first came out with this um the hijacker 75 f 003 worked very well the hijacker slim 9 sp worked about seven or eight days ago this one was doing great um and i would try these two the 9 sp 006 has worked as you can see i've tried three of these at a time when i find something that works i usually will buy three of them 
Um, so all of these have worked in the past. These have just been recent, and these are more of the more popular ones. This one's these ones are super popular as well. Um, also, uh, what else was there? Oh, the balsam minnows. We've gone why? Why? Okay, balsam minnow. One one tens. Recently, the one one tens have been super active here. It's been the one one tens zero zero one that has been active. As you can see, I've got three of them. Um, in the past, these two have been actually fairly active. And then you jump down to the ninety fives, well, or the nineties. The nineties have been active, but it's been the zero zero one. It's been the zero twos, and it's been the zero sixes. And then I think a few times it's been the 90F004s. So the reason I'm giving you all of these isn't for you to go out and purchase them. I'm giving all of these to you to show you sizes, depths that they dive to. These dive the 3.5 meters. Um, the hijackers, they dive to four meters i'm trying to show you the lengths i'm trying to show you the weights i'm trying to show you kind of what you might want to look for if you want to buy your own lure and try it out here instead of just randomly picking some lure okay so all of these have worked in the past as of right now if we go into the records and ratings the ones that you really want to look for is under uh the atlantic salmon so as you can see you got this 110f001 for the balsam minnow everybody's been switching over to this one right here so i'm going to try this one today but as you can see in the past it's been the original crank 9001 then if you go down to the leduga salmon i know this is probably going to make you guys sick but leduga salmon right here and people have started to switch over to this crank 9006. But in the past, you've also got the deep runners that have been working. You've also got um, the clumsies that have been working. You've also got the, the snatchers for a while there. Oops. For a while there, the snatcher 003 has been worked really, really, really great. Okay, so when it comes down to it, you're looking for 11, 12, 13, 14 centimeters, 10, 9 centimeters. You're looking for 3, 4 to 6 meters deep, and you're looking around 10 to about 15 or 16 when it comes down to the mass in grams. Okay, so those are your lures. When it comes down to Ladoga Archipelago, it think of it as a gigantic Volkov River with a monster fish called the Baltic Sturgeon in it that may actually try and pull your ass all the way around the, the, the map, okay? It's not much harder than Volkov. The action is a lot greater. The fish can be bigger, but when it comes down to it, for the most part, if you fish Volkov, you can probably come out here and fish this. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, don't hit it. Just make sure no matter what you do, subscribe. Thanks for com coming to the channel and hanging out. I appreciate it. Keep gaming. Keep you in at midnight. Have a blast. We'll catch you guys in the next episode take care have a good one and bye bye oh my god another 40 minute video what an idiot